Back in the days when cameras were purely mechanical devices, they'd often have a self-timer function, whereby you'd wind up a spring and trigger the self-timer before running back to the group of people you were photographing in order to include yourself in the group shot. Self-timers do have other uses too. For instance, I often use a self-timer to trigger the shot if I'm shooting at a slow shutter speed with the camera on a tripod and I haven't got a cable release handy. Once cameras moved over to electronic control, the self-timer became an electronic timer, often giving more choice in the length of delay available. Anyway, going back to mechanical timers, not all cameras had them. Take this Practica Super TL1000 for instance, it doesn't have a self-timer, so if you needed that bit of functionality, then you were a bit stuck. Or were you? Most people who are familiar with old cameras will recognise the trusty cable release, which screws into the centre of the shutter button, allowing you to trigger the camera without the risk of camera shake as you press the button. The cable release is a simple device, with a button at one end and a proddy thing at the other, which triggers the shutter, the two ends being joined by a flexible cable. At some point along the way, someone must have come up with the idea of making a clockwork self-timer that screws into the cable release socket, like this Minori self-timer here. There's the usual tapered thread for the cable release socket, and a timer module at the other end. You simply wind up the spring, lock the latch until you're ready, then release the latch and watch as the unit operates. There are a couple of red flags that appear as the unit approaches its firing position and then disappear once the shutter has fired, giving you a visual indication when the shot has been taken. If I wind it up again, you'll notice the proddy bit coming out of the threaded end as it gets close to the firing position. Of course, not all cameras are the same, and how far the shutter release has to be pressed varies from one model to the next. But they thought about that. By unlocking these two knurled sections, and screwing the front section inwards, the length of the proddy bit will be longer. Inversely, screwing the front section outwards will shorten the length, allowing you to fine-tune the unit for your particular camera. I haven't got a camera without a self-timer to hand at the moment, or at least not one without film in it anyway, so I'll use my Miranda to demonstrate the unit in operation. You might be able to tell from the poor lighting and audio that I'm not in my usual studio, and I'm trying to make do with a couple of torches as lighting and my phone for the audio. So, advance the camera winder, wind up the self-timer module and engage the locking lever, Gently screw the unit into the cable release socket and release the locking lever. Sit back and wait for the shutter to fire about 10 seconds later. Thusly. And that's about it. This Minori self-timer is nicely made, and I love the two red flags that appear just before the shutter fires. Mine even came with its original leather case, with slots in the back so you could attach it to your camera strap. There were plenty of other self-timer units available, so I suspect there'll be a fair few on eBay and such like. Anyway, that's about it for this little interim video. If you've enjoyed watching, please like the video and maybe even subscribe to the channel, not forgetting to click on the bell icon so you get notifications when future videos are released. That's it for now, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future video.